Hi, this is Grace Pamela with Samrana.com, and today I'm going to show you how to use uh, bokeh overlays and how to use the action collections to apply those bokeh overlays. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to do a quick few samples and a few different um, overlays, just kind of a variety so you can kind of see the different things that you can do and how to further edit them for your images. So I'm going to go ahead and show you a few images. These are all by uh, Shannon Squires Photography, Stephanie Rado Photography, and Lindsay Lee Photography. They were very generous enough to let me use their images. So I'm going to go ahead. So I'm going to show you how to apply Christmas tree vocal overlays and string lights and how to uh, better customize them, how to change the colors. You can see the actions have been uploaded over here. And these are the different things that you can do with it using the action collection. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to apply uh, bokeh overlay string lights here. So these are just going to be quick examples, so they're not going to be perfect, but it will definitely show you exactly how to use your overlays. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and select uh, apply bokeh overlay and select play. Now, um, any window that you were last using will pop up, so it might your bokeh overlays might not just pop up randomly. You might need to go search in your computer to where you save them. I saved mine to my desktop so I can have easy access to them. So I'm going to go ahead and select this overlay here, select place, and I'm going to go ahead and hold down the shift key on my keyboard or you can select this little link here and that will hold um, the perspective of that overlay so that way it doesn't get all distorted. And I'm just going to put it where I think would be a good spot. I'm going to select this check mark right here and select continue. So you might want to use either a soft or hard brush just depending on what you're doing. I'm going to use a soft um, black paintbrush here and I'm just going to erase it off of the parts where I don't really want it. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to zoom out just a bit so you can kind of see what I'm doing. So now you see we have our overlays applied and they're on our image. Now just in case you're not using the action collections and you're just applying um, the overlay, you'll notice that it's black and you're going to be like, what the heck, what do I do with this black stuff around my book overlays? Now that's because the screen and the, the blending mode is supposed to be set to screen and then the black will completely disappear. Okay, so now that you have your um, overlay on, you can do different things with it. You can resize and rotate it again. You can flip it around. Um, you can also warp. Now this is only for PS. You won't be able to do this in PSE, but all you do is you play it and you can further customize um, exactly how you want it to look. And select the check mark. And then you can also brighten your bokeh. All you do is select uh, play. And then you see you have a new layer that's clipped down on top of your bokeh overlay. And then you can adjust the opacity here to make it brighter or whichever you prefer. If you don't like it, you can select this eye here and just um, delete it. You can also select the brightest bokeh, which you'll go ahead and press play. And this would duplicate your bokeh overlay. It kind of gives a different kind of brightening effect. And for if it's too bright, you can go ahead and lower the opacity also. Once you have it where you like it, you can right click and select merge down. And um, this is just asking what you want to do with your layer mask. If you are fine with not having your layer mask, you can go ahead and select apply. If you want to keep your layer mask, you can select preserve. And there you have, um, both of them have merged together, but you still have your one layer mask. You can also darken and you can blur it. Uh, you can do it a little bit or you can do it a lot completely up to you. Then you can go ahead and add some motion blur if you like. It's very subtle so you have to do it multiple times and I'm just quickly showing you how to use the action collections here. Um, you can go ahead and change the color, select continue, and you can select a completely different color that you like. So if you want more uh, golden, And again, you can adjust that opacity. 
you can add more color. And you want to make sure when you add these um, bokeh overlay editor actions that you're selecting your actual bokeh overlay. And it will remind you before it plays the action. But just in case, um, because it will clip it down to this layer. Otherwise, if it's not clipped down and you release it, it's going to turn your whole entire image uh, into that effect. So you want to make sure it's clipped down so that way it only affects your bokeh overlay layer. And you can also brush on uh, change bokeh color. So I'm going to show you that one on a different one. Okay, so now we have our quick before and after. Um, we added some string lights and a little bit of magic. I'm going to go ahead and show you um, another overlay. You're going to select apply and I'm going to grab a Christmas tree. I'm going to show you the warp tool here. And I'm just going to pick a general uh, size here. It does not need to be perfect because we can always go back in and further edit it. And I'm going to grab my hard uh, brush and I'm going to make sure my layer mask is clicked. And I'm just going to start erasing where it's obviously not on the tree. If you can't tell, you can just go ahead and hide the eye. And then just kind of work from there. Alright, so now we have some on here, and I'm going to go ahead and use the warp uh, tool. And I'm going to press continue. And now here you'll see it's already kind of sized perfectly, but I kind of want it to be a little wider to match the tree. So you can go ahead and drag it out to match it wherever you want it to be. This is especially useful for if you have trees of all different sizes. Or maybe you have um, thinner trees and you want to make it thinner. Or maybe you just want different sized uh, bokeh. So like right now they're all kind of circles and you'll notice if you bring it in, it kind of turns into more oval-like. Um, this is especially useful for if you already have some natural bokeh in your light, in your image. Because then you can match it um, more to those that are already naturally there. Okay, so there is one tree and we're just kind of going through it quickly. Press continue. You can go ahead and go in the layer mask and erase wherever you see fit. If you make any mistakes and you want it back, you can go ahead and change the color back to white and then you can kind of paint some back on. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and use my warp tool again. You can kind of better shape it to whatever you're applying your bokeh to. Okay, there we go. Now we added some gorgeous Christmas tree lights and um, you can further edit and add more if you like. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep blazing through. I have a few more examples to show you and then I wanna show you how to do it in PSE at the end. Okay, so this one, I'm gonna add a wreath overlay. Select play. I'm gonna grab a wreath here. Select continue and I'm just going to kind of, it looks like it's in the best position it could be. I'm going to go ahead and erase where I don't want it to be. I don't want it to be on the bow. Okay, so now I'm going to show you what you can do. Um, if you want to add, these wreaths are kind of tricky because they're not always the same shape. Um, so what you want to do is you can go ahead and select your clone tool here, your clone stamp tool. Um, you'll select it here and you'll right click and then select the top one, clone stamp tool. 
you want to make sure it's a hard brush and then you want to select current layer okay and then you want to make sure you have your actual layer clicked not the layer mask and then you can go ahead and adjust your brush to fit over one of the bokeh so you can go ahead and select alt on your keyboard and then you can kind of stamp it around and you can grab different ones so that it looks um, so there's still some variety there but you might have to resize your brush or find one that's kind of by itself So now if you have more than one wreath and it's kind of the same shape, what you can do is you can right click and select duplicate layer. And you can bring it over to the other wreath. And you can go ahead and flip it horizontally and resize it. You can go to uh, free transform if you need to. Or uh, you can go to resize and rotate if you need to. And then you kind of have a quick um, head start. So you can go ahead and then select your layer mask here and you can further get rid of anything you don't want or clone more on that you need. If you notice it's acting weird and it won't let you place it somewhere, that's just because you already brushed it off of your mask. So you can go ahead and right click that layer mask and select apply layer mask. And then you can add a new layer mask and then uh, you can go back to what you were doing and it will let you do it now. I like to, like this is what I was talking about earlier when I was telling you but that you might want to try to match them with your bokeh that's already there. So this is some natural light that was already there. So what you want to do is I'm going to go ahead and click both of these and merge layers and then I'm going to switch it back to screen mode. And now I have these here and I'm going to add my new layer mask. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the bokeh color. I'm going to select continue. And I'm going to select the color that's already in my book over here. Select continue. So now you see I changed the color just a bit, but now it matches. Next, I'm going to go and ha I'm going to go ahead and blur it a bit. Okay, that might be. I don't know if that's too much or not, so I'm going to do it slowly. I added one here that doesn't blur as much, just so you can kind of really do it at your own pace. So now you can see it kind of matches that a little more. Alright, so now we have our before and after. Before and after. And we'll go ahead and move on to the next one. Now this one I'm going to show you how to use the bokeh prep. Now this is a really neat tool because sometimes when you're applying your bokeh, you see this um, natural bokeh over here, it's already, it, it's there but you can hardly see it. It's really light and that's just because there's a lot of light coming in from over there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, press play and I'm going to add a similar looking bokeh over there. I'm going to select a check mark. So now you see it looks the same and it's still really light. So this tool comes in handy um, for when you have that problem. So you can go ahead and select it and press play. And I'm going to use a soft white paintbrush in my black layer mask. And I'm going to go ahead and paint behind it. So now you can see we're able to make our bokeh pop a little bit more. 
and you can adjust the opacity of it to make it pop more and you can also if you wanted to play it around the rest of your image um, you know if you wanted to otherwise you really don't have to and you can just do the area of your bokeh or if you kind of want it to match but not to that effect you can bring down your brush um, opacity just to kind of blend So there now you can see we have our uh, bokeh and uh, you can see it a little better. It pops a little more. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go back up here and I'm going to show you really quick um, some of the things you can do with the different color bokeh. So this is our first bokeh that has different colors in it. So I'm going to go ahead and you can change the color to be something completely different, something that maybe matches in your image. And again, you can choose a color in here or you can select around uh, in your image. So you can either do something like that or um, another thing you can do is you can brush on change bokeh color. And you can select um, a color that you like. I'm going to stick with something like that. And now you see it disappeared. That's because our layer mask uh, turned black. So this way you can grab a soft um, white paintbrush and then you can paint in the colors that you don't want. So let's say we don't want this green, but we want the rest of the colors. We can go ahead and paint over the areas that we want to change the color of. Now this green one was from our image previously. So we can't change that one unless we do it on the actual image. Oops. Now it can get kind of tricky when it kind of blends, so you just have to play with it a bit. And you can change the opacity kind of blend it slowly or you can just kind of change the color of that book next to it okay so now we kind of got rid of that green so just a quick example of what you can do with that action okay so I'm gonna go ahead and go over to the next one I'm gonna apply bokeh I just wanted to show you one that was in studio. Now this one is going to be a little more tedious than the other, so I'm just going to really quick show you. This is kind of cool because it makes it look like there is a bunch of string lights in the background in the studio there. So it's this one has a lot of erasing that you're going to have to do. You have a lot of bokeh here. But I promise it's worth the result if you stick with it. And you can go back in and change it. I'm just not going to make it too perfect here. We can just get rid of it completely. Completely up to you.
Okay, so just a quick example, and you can see that I should probably go back in and put more um, around here. I was just trying to go quick here. But here you can see it in effect in uh, Studio. Okay, so that's all we really need to know, I think. If you have any more questions on how to do this in Photoshop, please feel free at any time to email me and I will help you with this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go over into PSE and I'm just going to show you um, just the different tools and where they are because it is a little different but not too much. So as I said before, this action collection is pretty much identical. Um, it just doesn't have the warp ability in PSE so I wasn't able to do that. So the same thing here, I'm going to press play, apply bokeh overlay, and I'm just going to select one that I like. I'm going to hold shift key on my keyboard, or you can select this little box here that says constrain proportions, and you can go ahead and drag it around and place it wherever you want. And then you want to select this little green checkbox here and select continue. Now here we have the same problem where it's really bright, so I'm going to go ahead and play uh, bokeh prep. Now here the brushes are a little different. The brushes are right here and your brush, um, the different brushes are right here. I usually select the first one and then your opacity is right here and your brush settings is right here. So you want to, um, for this, for the bokeh prep you want a soft brush. So I'm going to take the hardness from 100 down to 0. And then I'm going to use my bracket keys to make it bigger otherwise you can adjust the slider here. You can see it's going up. And then you can go ahead and paint it on. Again, I'm in my layer mask. You, you can see the white part where I painted it on. And then you can adjust the opacity right here. There we go. Uh, resize, rotate, all that stuff is pretty much the same. I'm going to go ahead and show you, make sure you're actually clicking your book overlay when you're brightening it or darkening or using any of those effects. And you can see it's clipped down right here. Darken, blur, it's the same, you have to click the actual one. And you can see you can blur it a lot or you can just blur it a little or just leave it the way that it is. Completely up to you. Motion blur. Again, you have to play it a lot to really get it to be motion blur. I didn't want to make it too big of a difference because a lot of times it's really not moving that much. Um, the lights are usually stationary, unless if it's, I guess this is kind of in a road, so it just depends on your image, the amount that you want to do. Um, you can add more color, you can change the bokeh color, select continue, and you can select any color you want, or you can, um, you can choose, you can select around in your image, or wherever you want. and you can change whatever. So let's say we wanted uh, to get rid of the red here. Kind of the same thing here. Let's say we wanted to get rid of um, the blue. And you can go ahead and undo or you can just go into history or you can just paint it back. Completely up to you, whatever is faster. So now we only have red. So um, you can completely customize it. Everything is pretty much the exact same. Um, and also I wanted to show you really quick. Your cloning tool is right here, your clone stamp tool. And the opacity is right here, the size. Um, and you can select the different brushes here. And select Alt on your keyboard. Oh, I'm going to make my brush a little bigger. And you can go ahead and place it wherever you like. So there you go. Um, I think there's one more thing I kind of wanted to show you. I just thought of it just now. Sometimes if you like a bokeh, like you like this one right here, but you don't like it that in location, in that location, you can grab your lasso tool, select around it, 
right click and you can select free transform and you can kind of move it around to a different location. I, I kind of misselected it a bit, but you can always brush that off afterwards. And you can kind of move it to wherever else you want it to be. And then you can go to um, select and deselect. And then you can kind of go into your layer mask and blend it in a bit more. So that's just a quick example, and then in Photoshop it would be the same way. Um, let me show you. So like here, we can grab our lasso tool, and let's say I didn't want these right here on this branch. And I can go ahead and make sure I'm actually clicking the bulk of layer, and then select free transform, and then I can kind of move it wherever I want. Another thing you can do too, um, I'm going to deselect. I'm going to merge this down just so I can show you. You don't want to have anything clipped when you do this. But another thing you can do too is you can do the same thing. Grab it and then right click and then select layer via cut and then make sure it's set to screen mode. And then this way when you move it around it's going to go over your other bokeh and it kind of gives a cool effect. Another thing you can do with your bokeh overlays is you can add more than one on top of each other. Um, so you can have multiple ones. So let's say you wanted uh, these two colors together, you can combine them. So I'm just going to really quick show you. I'm going to do it here really quick, just to quickly show you um, how that looks. And it kind of gives like that same layering effect that we just did. Select the check mark and then erase where you don't want it. Another thing you can do too is um, if you already erased it off of a subject and you don't want to do it all over again, you can for the most part uh, select the last layer mask you were using, select Alt, and then drag it up and select Replace Layer Mask. And you can kind of see now um, it got rid of it, but it's not always perfect because this wasn't here before. So you just have to kind of go in and for the edit, but it also it kind of gives you a head start. And if you want to see where you erased it, you can select the backslash key on your keyboard. So now we kind of added a little more bokeh and you can uh, play the same effects here to kind of get it to look either similar or you can do a different color, uh, whatever you prefer. So whatever you like, you can also make it kind of a similar color, whatever you prefer. But that's also another thing that you can do. Um, it doesn't work that well for this image, but for other images it might come very much in handy. Alright, so I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you learned lots on how to edit and apply your bokeh overlays. They're definitely a lot of fun to play with and they're a lot of fun too, especially when you are out on location like this or in studio and you just don't want to have um, all of that setup and takedown because it's a lot of work, especially in a situation like this where it's not realistic to have uh, lights that are up. So, um, and also if there are some lights, a lot of times there won't be, sometimes it won't be bright enough or there might not be enough lights. So this way you can kind of really add on more um, things to your images without having to do too much work. Okay, thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys learned a lot. Bye guys!